Hello, hello. Hello. Hiya. Nice to see you. And you. Uh, just going through. Hello. Hi, yeah, good to see you. On again. Straight down. We met at work. Edwina joined a company I was already working at. She turned up all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed <laughs> in her new brick-red suit that her mother had made for her specially to start work. I was quite struck by his blue eyes. I do remember that. I wasn't thinking much about work at the time. It was my first day at work and I thought, oh good, there's some nice looking men here, great. I think that was about it. It was Jason's. <laughs> <laughs> so not true. We wrote the business plan in the back bedroom. For some stupid reason, bought a franking machine because we thought that made us look really business-like. And that was um, extraordinarily and stupidly expensive. And we took lunch breaks even though we were taking a break from nothing on some days. Yeah, yeah. What does your company do? I, I love the analogy that we're basically voyeurs of the shopping trolley. It's our job to sit on people's shoulder when they're shopping and get under the skin of what they do. We take the data that comes out of the till. We add all that data together so we know what every person in that supermarket was buying that day. So it's basically about understanding the customer. And it's that intimacy that we're trying to create. Mass intimacy. Mass intimacy, yeah. The UK is important for two reasons. One, it was the beginning of everything. And secondly, because Tesco was the first client with imagination who saw what we could do. Yeah, the numbers are black and white. You can't really argue with them. We know what you buy, where you bought it, what time of day you bought it, what else you're buying at the same time, whether you've bought it before or not. We can see exactly what's in someone's basket. This week, next week, for the whole year, we can see how they're changing their behaviour. There's so much you can really understand from, from data in terms of how people live their lives, what's happening. You know, you can spot people, for example, if they've lost their job, kids leaving home, going off to university, people who are looking to move home because they're ringing lots of estate agents. Data is an insight into people's worlds. Plenty of companies will say that they listen to customers, but we've made it far, far easier for Tesco to actually listen to what their customers are saying by understanding what it is they're doing when they're in the store. Here it is. This is Warburton's Milk Roll. It's a product that doesn't really sell that much, but actually the people who buy it, that's all they buy in, in bread. They don't buy any other bread from the entire range. Although they're worth a load to Tesco, they spend a lot in store. It's the kind of product that if you got rid of them, um, they wouldn't be able to switch to anything else. Their sales in bread would go down and they might even leave the store altogether. You can only get to that kind of information with our data. There's no way you could do it from sales data at all. So you're the saviour of the milk roll? Uh, absolutely. I'm the <laughs> master of the milk roll and I make sure that it's an available in every single store. They're physically changing, you know, one of the world's biggest businesses. What we're trying to do is help businesses get consumers to visit their shop one more time. And actually, if you do that, those businesses make millions of pounds, millions of dollars. Dunhumby are very important to the success of Tesco. We took instant decisions on the back of the information that Dunhumby drew out of this mountain of data of shopping. Clive and Ed Weiner are very remarkable people. Well, I was once told that, you know, to have a successful business, you needed um, a genius and a bastard working together. And I guess I'm really worried because I'm not the genius. <laughs> Clive has the big ideas and I make them happen. I think that's the way it works. Well, America was founded on our work with Kroger in Cincinnati. Michael and Mike are now heading out to Atlanta to lead our business with Home Depot. Unhumby is all about great ideas. And Mike and Michael are embarking on a new adventure which shows just how dangerous ideas can be. I always find it difficult to describe myself and talk about myself. I mean, generally I just describe myself as an average guy. I have a, a wife and, and a four-year-old boy and that's what kind of makes me tick. So when I'm not focused on my work, that's what I'm focused on.
Mike and Michael actually found out that Home Depot was spending something like $900 million on advertising to everyone. And in fact, only 10% of their customers were really the high spenders. And so having set alight the Home Depot board with this snippet of amazing news, they now find themselves propelled towards Atlanta. For us, the exciting thing is trying to replicate what we did in Cincinnati. So Michael and I were in the early days of Dunhumby USA, and we're looking at this as the opportunity to almost create Dunhumby USA all over again and start in a small office with a small team and build out the Dunhumby culture and really help turn a client around in a big way. For both of us, you know, Cincinnati has, has been our home for about, you know, 10 years. And so, you know, making that change is a big thing. But I think even, you know, professionally, I mean, we're leaving the security of an established kind of business and established relationship. It feels like, um, it kind of feels like we're back four years ago trying to build something new again. So from that standpoint, it's pretty exciting. We want to make the company the billion dollar company that we know it all can be. The amazing thing about Dunhumby is it allows kind of geeks like us to have an amazing impact on, on people's lives. Hola, me llamo Andres. Bienvenidos a Dunhumby, Mexico. Mexico, the big boys are Walmart, and Walmart own more than 50% of the Mexican marketplace right now. They came in and they have just grabbed the entire market in one go. Gigante, which is a long-term homegrown retailer, has a lot of fight um, ahead of it, and, and we're part of that fight. It was really tough because obviously we were new together, had never worked before, didn't know each other. So we were not only trying to find our, find our sort of relationship on a personal level, uh, but also on a professional one as well. We just had to get on with the job and do the best we could. And there was a lot of tension and there was a lot of maybe not doing things in the best way together. We had some uh, really interesting moments where, you know, we were, we were stressed, we were laughing, we were crying. There were fireworks, there was uh, moods, there was uh, upsets, there was lots of tension, but it, things had to be done. It was um, the sort of 12 weeks, which I think anyone involved would say uh, they wouldn't wish on their worst enemies in many ways. Um, an incredible experience, a real roller coaster ride, some incredibly long hours and hard work and stress and frustrations. But at the end of it all, um, a successful result, a very happy client. Um, and we're moving now towards the ultimate goal, which is the longer term relationship. So looking back, I guess you could say it's worth it. Why the, uh, the chicken cross the road kind of thing? Well, in Mexico City, chickens don't cross the road. It's too dangerous. Yeah, Giganti are in real trouble. I mean, it is now the time to fight and survive because the battle is going to get even harder. And so we are now working with them for survival and to win back some of that Mexican marketplace. I thought Andy was going to be quite relaxed and easy going, which he is. Um, and I thought Laura was going to be quite fired up and Latin, and she is. We're like brother and sister now. That's a good description. Yeah. Because obviously we're very similar ages. I uh, know. Uh, He's 11 years older, actually. How many? 11. That's because you lie about your age, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> One of the biggest challenges for Max and Ian is the fact that, well, first of all, they're not French, and naturally everyone feels their own market is different. So they've got the challenge of really winning the trust of casino senior management to really say, well, look, we understand how the French shopper thinks, even though we're not French. Running away to let in uh, to prepare for a meeting tomorrow, which is going to be a bit of a shitty meeting. Last week it was shitty. <laughs> It was a group of people who make you realise that being British in France is a really different experience. There are difficult moments, and you really have to go with that leap of trust and go, God, you must have done this before. Surely you must know what you're talking about. Do that. 
don't know how many Francis like that, the cowboy that strolls into town and everyone stops eating and looks and sees what, what's going on. There's this new guy in town, he doesn't speak the language, uh, very different ideas, and he looks mean, he's going uh, to change things. Yeah, so we smile. Yes, yeah. we do it in a nice way. Is this it? This is the big one? Yeah. 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 Every meeting is a big one, and this one is a big one in particular. So, that's good. Cool. It's kind of crunch time, really, for um, uh, for this project and this particular bit. We went off on different paths last time, um, and uh, and now we need to agree the answer. You get your, your plane ticket, your parachute, and your computer, and that's it. It's a case of uh, going there, change your business, uh, make them think about the customer, uh, and, and really start to deliver some results with them. Guys, do you mind just um, not filming for this bit? That would be, um, that'd be really good. Thanks very much. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cheers. Well, India is a very important part of our future because it's going to give us the ability to scale quickly. We need to really take the Dunhumby culture, the Dunhumby way, and embed that in that new marketplace. And Steph and Nikki really have those skills because they've been with us, uh, they've grown their careers with us, they've got so much of our thought processes embedded in them that they can help uh, develop that talent over in India. My, my background within Dunhumby oh, is more around uh, client management, project management, so uh, I think the blend... <laughs> I can't concentrate with men weeing around the corner, quite frankly. Dunhumby as a business has decided that we're going to build a hub in India. It's, my job is to make sure that that happens and that we do it quickly enough that we don't compromise on quality and that we don't spend the earth doing it. And who carries the can if it doesn't, if it falls flat on its face? Me. So um, when would I expect to get a phone call back? Oh right, okay, that's soon. Brilliant. Okay, great. Thanks, bye. Fifteen minutes apparently, business development manager. We shall see. <laughs> one of our biggest challenges is finding people and growing the business to match our ambitions. And one of the few markets in the world that can provide that for us are, are places like India. What I like about it is that I can come into the office and do my job and work with some really, really talented people who just amaze me every day at A, their thirst for knowledge, but B, their ability to just make things better. But then when I leave work, I step out into India, if you like, and uh, you, you, know, you go on the roads to, to go home and you, you go out in, in Delhi perhaps and you get a sense of, of, I guess what people might call the real India. But they're both the real India. This business started in your bedroom. It did. It did. Would I get the same opportunities in other places that I would get in Dunhumbi? And uh, I'm not so sure that the answer would be yes. Where you have to pinch yourself is this sort of came out of a good idea. And I think we can completely see how we blend well, how we can communicate together and how all of that um, actually is far, far greater than the, uh, than the two individuals. Here we are, we've got a, a business now that has a reputation, certainly in retailing globally. Don't know what the effect is of having uh a married couple running the organisation, but uh, it's pretty unusual, uh, but it seems to work. It was a terrific atmosphere. Everybody always laughs at us when we say we work together because they just don't understand how that can possibly happen. But for us, we think it's normal. They've just got a childish enthusiasm about everything and everything's possible. Uh, and then they rely upon other people to work out whether it is. Two people can achieve an extraordinary amount, and I think most people rationalise not doing something by um, by saying, you know, we need more people, bigger team, more stuff around us. But in reality, two people can do almost anything. 